Hey guys, in this video, I want to talk a little bit about Proxmox and why it is quickly becoming my preferred method of self hosting. But first, a quick message from today's video sponsor. This episode is sponsored by Linode, the largest independent cloud computing provider. If you don't want to or can't for whatever reason self-host applications the way we talk about on this channel, Linode provides virtual servers that make it easy and affordable for you to host anything in the cloud. You can set up any of the applications that they have available in their marketplace with just a few clicks, or you can set up your own Docker VPS and install basically whatever you'd like in a Docker container. They have load balancers and firewalls available to help keep your apps online and safe. If you run into any trouble getting set up, Linode comes with amazing 24 seven customer support by phone or ticket, along with hundreds of guides and tutorials to help you get started. Sign up today at linode.com slash dbtech and get a $100 60 day credit on your new Linode account. Links are in the description. So for the last couple of years, we've been talking about self hosting primarily with Docker and Portainer um, and Open Media Vault. Uh, we had one video of Open Media Vault 4, and then I did a lot of Open Media Vault 5. And here recently we've talked about Open Media Vault 6, which I guess is actually finally released out of beta. Um, and it was just weird timing that I decided to switch to Proxmox right as that happened. Completely, completely random thing that happened there. So the reason I wanted to do this was because I knew that there was more out there than just uh, Open Media Vault. It's been great. It's been, it's been super useful uh, for me to learn and, and in turn teach how to get into self-hosting. Um, but I knew that there was more out there that I wanted to learn about self-hosting and, and virtualization and things like that. So uh, when I decided to dip, to kind of dip my toes into the Proxmox realm, uh, I, I relied heavily on on my my Discord server. A big shout out uh, to to Jay Collins for for walking me through some of the stuff I was really struggling with. Um, but what I did, just because again it was a comfort zone, it's what I knew. I knew what to expect. I knew what to look for. Uh, when I first got into Proxmox, the first thing I did was deploy an Open Media Vault 6 virtual machine in Proxmox. If we take a look, this is this is the Proxmox instance or a, a restored backup of that instance. I've since changed some things that we'll get into here in just a little bit. But uh, this is a restored backup of uh, my original Proxmox setup that I went with. Uh, again, I've got uh, this one virtual machine right here uh, that is running Open Media Vault 6. Um, and in that, we've got a few containers. In fact, let's, let's just see what I've got running uh, in there. Uh, let's let's clear this. Oops, there we go. And then we'll do a uh, Docker PS. So in this Open Media Vault 6 instance inside Proxmox, I've got Cloudflare. Uh, if you haven't checked out my video on how to self-host using Cloudflare without any port forwarding, that's what that is talking about. That's that Cloudflare Docker container. Anyway, that's what that is. I've got a MySQL instance for the ghost. Oh, there we go. Uh, I've also got a Bookstack instance with Maria Database, and I've got Portainer uh, just to, to help manage everything, because I still like Portainer quite a bit. So if we take a look uh, at this setup, we're gonna come back to here, and uh, everything here looks good. We've got one node online, one running, uh, as far as virtual machines, and no LXC containers. Uh, that's actually what I've since moved to. We'll talk about that. Um, but basically, if we take a look, again, I've got one virtual machine, with four or five containers running inside of it. Six containers, I suppose, uh, now that I've thought about it. But <clears throat> basically, there, there is no, I wanna be clear about this, there is no traffic being pushed to this setup. There's This is not exposed to the internet at all. When we look at this at idle, we're idling it between, between like 10 and 25% CPU usage. Uh, we're idling at 86% uh, memory usage. I gave, I gave this setup four gigs of RAM. Um, and, and it is using 86% uh, of that to manage Open Media Vault and all of the Docker containers uh, within. Um, and then we're using about 13% of the, the one and a half terabytes of storage that I gave it. So we're using a lot of system resources. There's a lot of overhead in here from Open Media Vault 6. Um, and it's, it's not necessarily a, a dig on Open Media Vault 6 or 5 or whatever. It's just, it's an intermediate layer for management so we can control things, you know, like permissions and shares and things like that much more easily, right? That's that's one of the big perks to Open Media Vault is the ease of use and managing shares and, and that sort of thing. Problem is that it uses up a lot of resources. Here we can see that it spiked to 51%. So what I decided to do was learn a little bit more about Proxmox containers, uh, more specifically LXC containers. So let's let's kind of dig into that just a little bit here. This is uh, my, my live server. If you go to uh, dbtech.com or dbtech.fans, you'll hit this server. This, this piece of hardware is what you'll actually hit. This is live, this is in production. So here we have 
three LXC containers. And basically think of a, an LXC or a Proxmox container similarly to a Docker container in that with these containers, uh, they actually share resources with the host so that you actually minimize the amount of resources necessary to run uh, the, these separate containers. So they share resources at the core level, but then they kind of all branch off into different things for different use cases, uh, much like Docker uh, containers work. Currently, again, live production server uh, idling at 2% of my CPU cores, again, four cores, again, approximately uh, four gigs of RAM, using 53% of that versus the 86% that we saw earlier. And again, we're, we're still using about 13% of our storage. Uh, that's fine. I've done more with this since that backup was restored. So if you, if you, if you take a look here, let's actually put these side by side. Uh, they both got four CPU cores. They both got approximately four gigs of RAM and they both got approximately one and a half terabytes of hard drive space. So uh, we can see that there is far less overhead going with the uh, Proxmox LXC containers for self-hosting purposes. Now, remember over here on the left side with this uh, Open Media Vault 6 instance running inside Proxmox, I only had six containers running. Over here on the right side, let's actually take a look at this. Let's go full screen on that one, like so. And then let's open this up. This is gonna be dbtech.com. I'm gonna do a Docker PS. We've got Portainer, Cloudflared, uh, Bookstack, and Marae Database. So all of that is up and running for there. On dbtech.fans, uh, let's do oops, Docker PS. Again, we've got Ghost um, and MySQL, and again, Cloudflared. And then for Nginx proxy, or this Nginx container over here, we'll do the same thing. We've got uh, Portainer, Nginx proxy manager, and Go Access for Nginx proxy manager. Um, just for some testing that I'm doing along the side of this. So I've got three, I'm running 10 containers on this other server doing everything through LXC uh, Proxmox containers. And again, I'm using a far, far smaller amount of resources by doing everything through Proxmox containers than I would be running fewer containers in an Open Media Vault 6 instance. So that was, that was what really pushed me to want to learn more about Proxmox uh, was when I saw that I could run more and do, or when I could run more uh, services and that sort of thing and use fewer resources, that was a big selling point for me. Another really big selling point for Proxmox containers versus Open Media Vault and using Docker and that sort of thing. And let's be clear, I am still using Docker and Portainer and all of that in my LXC containers but I'm not using the overhead of Open Media Vault to do it. And as far as like doing backups, I can't express how much easier it is to manage backups using LXC containers versus uh, using Open Media Vault and trying to run backups through that. Uh, and deploying backups, uh, restoring and deploying backups, I've, I've never been this impressed. So I've actually got a third instance of Proxmox up and running. It's actually a Proxmox backup server. So let me pull that up. So here is our Proxmox backup server. I currently have both of uh, my demo server and my, my, my live server are both backing up to this instance. This is actually running in a virtual machine on Synology. That's irrelevant, but that's what's going on here. And if I come over here to my backups area, uh, here we can see all of the different containers that I have up and running. I've got a container 102, 103, and 104, and then VM or virtual machine 100. So if I minimize this, we can take a look and see 102, 103, 104, uh, and uh, 100 over here. So what we're actually seeing here is all of the different backups of those different uh, virtual machines and LXC containers. And if I open this up, I can't go back to uh, any of these, uh, what any of these different uh, backup options here. We can see when the backup was done, how big the backup is. Uh, also, uh, big, big change here. This is Open Media Vault 6 backup. Uh, these are all LXC uh, Proxmox backups. You can see there's a huge size difference in their backup sizes. So. Uh, you can you can do things like um, protect a specific backup so that it won't be overwritten or deleted depending on your backup schedule and and configuration. You can say don't ever delete this one. Uh, you can leave notes for yourself about what was going on there. Uh, there's lots of different stuff going on in here. So what really impressed me is while I was trying to learn clustering and high availability, uh, I kind of borked my uh, hardware setup that I had running on my Zima board and. Um, because I had backups of all of my different containers uh, over here on my on this uh, on this backup server, I was able to spin up a separate virtual machine uh, in with Proxmox and restore all of those containers. It kept all of their configurations. It kept their IP addresses. It kept absolutely everything. 
exactly what the way it was when I backed it up. And I went from a, a completely borked server to back up and running in like 10 to 15 minutes, um, just because of the way Proxmox works. So I am not by any means a professional with Proxmox, but I would love to uh, start a new series, that's my plan anyway, about kind of going through the process of setting up a Proxmox server, setting up a backup Proxmox server, and then once we're kind of comfortable, kind of you know navigating our way around that, actually get into some clustering, some high availability, and things like that, so that if you've got a, a node that shuts down for some reason, has to restart for some reason, or whatever, uh, it will automatically move containers that are on that device over to a separate device, so you'll have, I'm not gonna say no downtime, but very, very little downtime using Proxmox and high availability and clusters and that kind of thing. So hopefully uh, you found this video uh, interesting, if nothing else, as far as kind of my 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 dipping my toes in the Proxmox water. Uh, and if you're interested, definitely let me know by hitting the thumbs up button. Uh, also, uh, leave a comment down below. I'd love to to hear what you think about Proxmox down there. Uh, there, are, there are a ton of different ways that you can support the channel, also down in the description if you'd like to do that. Um, but I think with all of that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. So thank you guys for spending part of your day with me, and I will talk to you in the next video.